Okay everybody, this is Mooney Dashcam. Today we are in Hell's Kitchen, Manhattan. We're gonna be talking about the Westies, more specifically, Jimmy Coonan, and how he killed a legendary New York City loan shark named Ruby Stein. He owed him a lot of money, and that's a good way to wipe out your debt. So, we're gonna to go to the bar at 596 10th Avenue and look around a bit. Let's flip this around and get into it. This is a nice, pretty block to start the video. But okay, most of the story I'm gonna be telling you today comes from the testimony of a guy named William B. B A T T I E, also known as Billy. Now, he testified. Of course, whenever someone testifies, they have, they're trying to get something for themselves also. So you have to take everything they say with a grain of salt, but he is a firsthand witness and he was involved in this situation. So it's kind of the best knowledge that we have, the best source that we have on the, on the matter. All right, so he says, as Ruby steps into the bar, Billy's job was to lock the door and pull the curtains. Watch out for pedestrians. You'll see why I stopped. There you go. Can't be killing people out here. His job is to lock the door and pull the curtain so no one sees what's going on. Right as that happens. Oh, and by the way, if you're really into this stuff, try and, uh, try and think what this uh, murdering style reminds you of. I'll, uh, I'll let you know at the end who was inspired by it. As he does that, locks the door. A guy named Danny, also known as Grillo. Pops out from the kitchen and shots a few, shoots a few shots right into his chest, right? Then as he's laying on the floor, Coonan orders the others to shoot him after he was already dead. So a guy named Richie Ryan takes out his gun and shoots him, passes the gun over to the guy Billy. Billy shoots him also. They lay him under, uh, on plastic sheets at this point and they're undressing him. As they're taking off his socks and shoes, a thousand dollars falls out. So they all whack up $1,000 between the, the, the couple of them that were there uh, and uh, split it up between them. Then he gets pulled to the back of the bar. Now, this is where the story gets a little... There's two different ways that the story is told. Some people say that he was dismembered in the back of the bar. This guy says that he was actually there. And then other people say that he was dismembered in the bathroom. More, I've heard more that he was dismembered in the bathroom, but this guy was there, so I don't know. As he's being dismembered, the guy Billy looks away. He doesn't want to see him being dismembered. And one of the other guys says, haven't you got the stomach for it? Kind of like making fun of him a little bit. Like, well, what? You don't have the guts to, to look at what's going on? And he replies with, in front of the courtroom, he, he tells us in the courtroom, he replies with, that's not my bag. I'll kill anybody, but I'm not cutting into them. It left the courtroom in complete silence. And one of the one of the um, court officers c called lunch break to try and break the tension. And uh, they said the jurors were walking out like nervously smiling. They didn't know how to act after he said that. I never mentioned how much money Jimmy Coonan actually owed Ruby Stein. The figures that I gathered were between fifty and seventy thousand dollars. Now, this happened in 1977. The actual incident happened on May 5th, 1977. But 1977, fifty thousand to seventy thousand, compared to today's money, is about two hundred thirty thousand to two hundred eighty thousand. So you could, uh, not that you could understand it, but if you put yourself into the brain of a psychopath, a murderer, you could understand why you'd want to wipe that debt and. If murder is one of the tools in your arsenal, kill the guy. Uh, I almost said I get it, but you got where I'm coming from. Alright, so the bar is on this road. It's the next block up. The current name of the bar is Mr. Big's Bar and Grill. The old name of the bar was the 596 Club. Like I said, we're in Hell's Kitchen. Also... Ruby Stein was not your average loan shark. He was a, a legendary mob loan shark. He was an associate to the Genovese family and the Colombo family. He directly knew Fat Tony Salerno, Salerno, however you want to pronounce it. 
So Jimmy Coonan was not supposed to kill this guy. This was a, a big no-no. And they covered it up for as long as they possibly could. All right, this corner right here on the right is where the bar is. And will I be able to park right in front? Yes, I will. Look at that. This is it right here. Where's my finger? Where's my finger? Okay, right there. I'm going to hop out, of course, and you better look. It's nice and windy. I'm sure you guys are going to love to hear that. But here it is. Here's the bar. I'll try and get some old pictures of it. I don't know if there's really any out there. Should I go in and get a $4 shots and beers? We're in like the middle of Manhattan right now. Just a block or two over is... Times Square. Santa, a little depressing Santa. Mr. Biggs. So right inside here, he's lured in, door shut behind him, and shot and killed and dismembered in the bathroom. I have some pictures of inside. I'm not gonna go inside and bother with people eating. Of course, all this outside seating wasn't there at the time. This is new COVID stuff. <laughs> Say hi to the truck. Now, a fatal mistake that Jimmy Coonan made when he was dismembering this body was he did not stab the lungs to release the air. Let's get back in the truck and I'll talk. I'll tell you why that was an issue. I'm sure some of you maybe have already put together why not stabbing the lungs could have been an issue. Jimmy liked to dump bodies in the Hudson River, which is actually straight ahead. We're going to be shooting over there right now. I don't know exactly where he would dump the bodies in, but in 1977, the waterline of New York City, coastline, whatever you want to call it, was very, very different of a place than it is now. Today, it's all done up. It used to be very industrial very secluded, uh, all businesses, no real you know, foot traffic and stuff. So there was a lot more spots that you could do crazy stuff like dumping a body. So he dumps the body and days later, maybe weeks later, I'm not exactly sure on the timeline of this, the body floats up and emerges out of the sea in uh, Jamaica Bay, right by like the Rockaway Beach area. I don't exactly know where the body floated up, but if I found it, find it, I will show you exactly on the map where it floated and put up a picture. And if I didn't find it, I'll just show you where Jamaica Bay is. Right up here is the Hudson River. Oh, if you guys didn't put together what a uh, killing style this is similar to, it's very similar to Roy DeMeo's patented Gemini method where you'd walk into the Gemini Lounge, you shoot in the back of the head, stab you in the heart, hang you upside down in the bathtub, in the shower, let your blood drain out, dismember you, and spread you across Brooklyn, most likely to uh, the Fountain Avenue dump. And Jimmy Coonan was close with Roy DeMeo. He actually got Roy DeMeo to carry out like a long, long grudge that he had with uh, Michael Spillane. Mickey Spillane, sorry.
So, this was not a normal crew, of course. Jimmy once said... Let's not, let's not kill a dog in this turn here. See, that's the Intrepid right there. They actually... The Westies actually had a racket on the Intrepid. They almost made it go bankrupt because they had uh, no-show jobs on payroll there, which it sounds exactly like what it is. Just say that a guy's on the job and he gets paid like he's there and he never even shows up. And they also would uh, skim ticket prices. So they almost made the Intrepid go bankrupt, which is pretty impressive. They had their fingers in almost everything. They had their fingers in the Jacob Javits Center. They would periodically rob the Jacob Javits Center when uh, they had jewelry conventions. It was re really, really a fun group of guys. Oh, so Coonan once said, the more bodies you had, the more monstrous you looked. So he actually liked to kill people because it gave him a crazy reputation. Well, she was right. He had a crazy reputation. There are stories of them rolling a person's head back and forth on a bar, on that bar. Uh, they said behind the bar they also kept jars or bags of their victims' fingers to show people, to uh, show them that they're serious. Which, if it was me, that would get the message across pretty well. They even once killed a guy that they said they respected and liked. So they kept his head around for a little while. They put it on a bar top, and they would toast to him when they drank. They even actually put his favorite brand of cigarette in his lips and lit the cigarette. You know, the kind of stuff you do to someone you really respect. Now, I mentioned this before, but Ruby Stein was not your average loan shark guy. He had, out on the street any given day, several millions of dollars, all right? Now, that's not all his money that he put out there. I'm sure he had a lot of money on his own, but when he hooked up with Genovese and Columbo's, I'm sure they back a lot of this money. So, th when he gets killed, who collects the money now? James Coonan, Jimmy Coonan, got the black book. The very expensive, very sought after black book of Ruby Stein. They said it was a hit to the mob of about $4 million. Coincidentally, right after they get this black book, everyone in Jimmy's whole crew gets rich because they took over all the loans and they took over all the everything that is involved in being a loan shark. Let's see if I left anything out here. The way they confirmed that it was his torso was he recently had medical a medical problem and then when they got his torso back, they x-rayed the torso and compared it to the x-rays of when he had medical, the medical blood. Alright, I believe that is everything I have to tell you about this particular incident. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is a sick video. The subject matter is ridiculous. But, these are the ones I enjoy making. I hope you guys enjoy watching. The ones that are a little bit more twisted, you know.